It's called Sex Panther by Odeon. It's illegal in nine countries. Yeah. It's made with bits of real panther, so you know it's good. It's quite pungent. Oh, yeah. Ooh, it's a formidable scent. <laughs> Stings the nostrils in a good way. 60% of the time, it works every time. I think I needed some of that when I was in my 20s. Welcome to Flynn Dog Woodwork. Today, I've got another five gadgets that I just purchased for my shop. But instead of working 60% of the time, I think these tools are going to work 100% of the time. So let's get right to it and see if any of these tools work for you. Well, today, I've got some really cool ones for you. So make sure you stick around to the very end to see all five of these gadgets. And we've got a wide variety of tools to take a look at today. Everything from jig hardware to measuring devices to storage solutions. So I'm not going to waste any more of your time and we're going to take a look at this first tool. So there's a lot of woodpecker haters out there and I totally get it. These things are really expensive. And frankly, these red tools price themselves out for the average woodworker. However, you can't beat their accuracy and precision. But let's face it, many of the cheaper brands like Empire and Swanson also have excellent precision and accuracy. But there is one thing that those tools typically don't have, that Woodpeckers has incorporated in most of their designs. So let me show you what that simple feature is. And that feature is this little lip that runs along the bottom of these squares. This allows you to place it on your workpiece and it's fully supported without having to hold it. So I really appreciate the stability that that lip provides on all of my woodpecker squares. But what if I have a larger project? Well, that's when I have to revert back to one of my old framing squares. But the problem with these squares is they don't have a lip and they tend to be unstable and cause inaccuracies in your measurements. And I know you can buy larger woodpecker squares, but just look at the price of this thing. There's no way I'm gonna spend $300 on a large square. So I thought there's gotta be a framing square out there with that little lip made by a reputable brand. So I Googled deep once again, and I found that square. And guess who it's made by? That's right, it's Swanson. So the first tool that we're gonna take a look at today is the Swanson Framing Wizard. Let's unbox this and see all of its features. So inside the box, this is what you're gonna get. You're gonna get the framing square itself, as well as a little lip. It also comes with a little tightening screw, as well as an Allen key. So first off, let's talk about the convenience of this square. Instead of having to carry around a cumbersome framing square that you can't fit in your toolbox, this Swanson square will fold together and you can place it right in your toolbox. Now this square only comes in imperial markings, so if you're using metric, you may need to think about getting a different square. As I said before, having lips on squares is really important to me. And guess what? This one's got one. If you want men to like you, you must have beautiful lips. So as I place the square onto the workpiece, you can see that it's fully supported by this little lip. So some of you might be concerned, since this has moving parts, is this thing actually square? Well, let's check. So I'll take this square on a scrap piece of plywood and strike a line. Then I can flip the square over and test for square. And you can see there's just one line, so this square is square. But what if your square isn't square, or you drop it on the ground and you knock it out of alignment? Will you remember that Allen key? This is something I've never seen in any other square. If you have seen this, let me know in the comments. At the very end of the square, there's a little hole where you can stick your Allen key. This allows you to make micro adjustments either left or right to make your square exactly square. But there's also a bunch of other features that this square. Let's take a look at some of them. So first off, this square has little markings on the interior of the square. These allow you to use this scale right here to figure out the pitch of a roof. Secondly, I'm sure almost all of you have a T-bevel in your shop. But I can guarantee you that you don't have one this big. This is 17 and a half inches on the bottom and 16 inches on the top. This large frame is perfect for home improvement projects where you're trying to determine the angle of things like flooring or tiling. But there's one last feature that I want to show you before we move on. Remember that little tab? Well, if you want to describe a line right at six inches, you could lock that tab down right at six inches. Then you can place your pencil in that corner and scribe your line. And once you're done with this tool, it's as easy as removing that tab and placing it on the lip. You can lock it onto the lip, fold it up, and take it to wherever you need to go. 
Well, that covers our first item today. Now let's move on to our second item, which has everything to do with scribing lines on larger pieces of material. So this next tool is something that I envision using with plywood. That's what I'm talking about. Wow. I wish I could get my hands on that. When I'm first laying out a project with plywood, I like to oversize everything. This gives me a little bit of wiggle room in case I make any mistakes. And because of this, most of your measurements don't need to be precise. Up until now, I've been using this Woodpecker's TS32 to make my markings on my plywood. There's two problems with this square, however. The first problem is it's $170. The second problem is, as the name implies, it's only 32 inches long, and most plywood is at least 48 inches wide. But not only is plywood 48 inches wide, but it's also eight feet long, which is the equivalent of 96 inches. So what do we do if we have a bar top or a longer piece of furniture that needs a longer measurement? Well, that's what this next tool is all about. So this next tool is the gypsum board cutting machine. Let's unbox this and check it out. So inside the box, you'll get the tool itself along with the oddly shaped pencil. Once you get this pencil, throw it out immediately. This thing is junk. The good news is the tool will actually hold a regular pencil. Now, obviously, as the name implies, this tool was designed for cutting drywall. However, I do think there's some valuable uses for this tool in woodworking. So let's take a look at some of these features. So first off, you'll notice that I replaced the pencil with a grease marker. I think this is a better choice for this tool. If we look at the side of the tool, you can see that there's two levers. The lever on top actually engages a razor. If we look at the bottom lever, this allows you to unlock and lock down a tape measure. If we look at the handle of this tool, you can see there's some onboard storage for some razors. If we look at the tape measure, you can see that the tab is much larger. This allows you to rest it against the edge of your workpiece to give you some more support. So how are we going to use this funky tool? Hey lady! Get funky. Well, let's grab a piece of plywood and I'll show you how I'm going to be using it. So with the razor not engaged, you can simply slide out your tape measurement to find the measurement that you need. Then you can clip the tape measure on the edge of your workpiece. Once that's done, you can simply scribe your line. And the tape measure on this thing is a full 16 feet long, so you can tackle almost any measurement. Hey, Laura. Hey, Paul. But what if we want to be just a little bit more precise? Well, that's where that razor comes into play. Now, the thing that I like about having a razor to scribe your lines is it'll actually cut all the fibers of the plywood. This leaves you with a cleaner cut when you go to put a saw to it. Another cool feature that this tool allows you to do is to create circles and arches. By putting your tape on the edge of your workpiece, you can create any arch that you want. And I know not all of us do woodworking all the time, so if you are doing some drywall work, this will be the tool for you. Now this thing isn't the most accurate tool by any means, but it will get the job when you're rough cutting out your lumber. So if you're having some problems making those longer markings on your work pieces, this may be the tool for you. Well, that's gonna cover our first two items of the day. Before we move on to our third, I ask you to do me a huge favor, hit that subscribe button, leave a like, and leave a comment. It really does help out this small woodworking channel. Also, for any of the tools that we're taking a look at today, I'm gonna to leave links in the description below so you can go check out these tools for yourself. Now let's move on to our third item. So our third tool that we're gonna take a look at today is a tool that has over a thousand uses. Actually, maybe more than that. This is a tool that I stumbled upon while roaming the aisles at Rockler. And we all know when you go to Rockler, you can always have a little bit of sticker shock when you go to look at that price tag. However, this item is less than $10. 
And for that price, I thought I'd pick it up. And I've already used this tool for a short that I did last Thursday and a long form video that will come out this Tuesday. So what is this tool? Well, let's check it out. So this tool is the Rockler Locking Miter Slot Hardware Kit. Let me show you how we're gonna use it. So inside this kit, this is what you're gonna get. You're gonna get two miter bars along with two bolts, two washers along with two locking handles. So what do we use this hardware for? Well, this locking mechanism allows you to secure anything to a tabletop that has a miter slot. But in order to really show you how this hardware works, I need to give you a preview of a project that I'll be building on this channel on Tuesday. So if you're interested in learning how to build a feather board, check out my video this coming Tuesday and I'll show you how to build this exact feather board. So in order to install the hardware on this feather board, I first need to take the miter bar. Then I can take the bolt and slide it through the miter bar. After that, we'll slide this into the feather board, add a washer, and then the locking handle. Now that we have the hardware installed, we can simply slide the two miter bars into the miter slot. Once they're in the slot, we can lock it down with both the handles. Once we have the miter bars locked down, we can give it the old push test. And I'm putting all my weight into that and this thing isn't budging at all. If we remove the feather board and the handle, we can see how this locking hardware works. As we tighten down the handle, it pulls up on the bolt, causing the miter bar to spread outward. This creates friction in the miter slot, locking it down. And with both handles locked down, you can see how well this hardware works for things like feather boards. And I can assure you this wood isn't going anywhere if there's kickback. And the feather board is just one use for this hardware. If you think of any other uses, leave a comment below and let me know what your thoughts are. Well, that covers three items so far today. Now it's time to take a look at our fourth item, which really couldn't be simpler. So sometimes tape measures can be a pain in the butt. If you need to measure a corner, it's very hard to get your tape measure to stick in that corner. It can be very difficult to get your tape measure to fit exactly in a corner without having it slide around. Or you could be at too far of a distance to keep your tape measure from staying in place. And in these situations, it sure would be nice to have a third hand that would hold your tape measure in place. So I scoured the internet to see if there was some tool that could hold my tape measure in place. And that's when I found the Zezo tape measure tool. So let's go see how this works. So this tool really couldn't be any more simple. It reminds me of those magnets that we used to hang on our fridge to hold up our artwork. So how do we use this tool? Well, it's basically a tape measure clip. Let's take a closer look and check out some of its attributes. So it's probably a little bit difficult to see, but on the side, there's two different types of measurements. There's inches and centimeters. This thing is two inches long as well as 65 millimeters. If we squeeze the spring loaded clamp, this allows us to place our tape measure right into the device. With our clamp in place, it easily allows us to get the measurements on 90 degree angles. This device also lets you get measurements on acute angles as well. Not only that, but this clamp has just enough weight to hold your tape measure in place when you're making your longer measurements. Now I know this isn't a tool that you're gonna need every single day. However, it is a nice little convenience tool. And as much as I love gadgets, I had to pick one up. And this little clip is less than $10 for two of them. So if you have a need for this, go check it out. Well, that's gonna take us to our fifth and final item. Our next item is a clever little storage solution that I think might help out a lot of shops. Before I show you this item, however, I want to show you a couple of areas of my shop. So if your shop's anything like mine, you probably have a corner or two that has electrical cables like this just laying on the floor. And that's simply because I don't have enough hooks around my shop to hang up these wires. Or maybe your shop shares space with a garage and you have things like Christmas lights dangling off the walls ready to fall off whenever they choose to. Or it could be things like dust collection hoses dangling precariously off your ceiling or your wall or on the floor ready to be trampled on. Well, if you have any of those problems, this next item may help solve some of those issues. So what is this next item? Well, it's the Rapid Storage Straps. Let's unbox this item and see what it's all about. So inside the box, you're gonna get six straps, two small, two medium, and two large straps. Each one of these straps has an eye hole at the very top and they open and close with Velcro. Each one of these straps is made of polypropylene and is extremely tough and durable. In fact, I use this same material to hang up one of my kids' swings. In order to use these straps, all you need to do is to hammer in a nail or find a nail, 
Undo the Velcro, place your cords right in between the Velcro and clamp it down. And it really is nice to have things like electrical cords and your dust collection hoses being held up with polypropylene versus that old rusty nail. And these straps are wide enough to go around a four inch dust collection hose. So I've got some work ahead of me. Well, I hope you enjoyed checking out all these unique tools and gadgets as much as I enjoyed showing them to you. If you haven't already, make sure you hit that subscribe button, leave a like and leave a comment. It really does help out this small woodworking channel. Also, for all the gadgets we took a look at today, I'll leave links in the description below. Until next time, take care as always.